kia hora te marino, kia whakapapa ponamo te moana, kia tere te karohi rohi, tihei Maori ora. Welcome once again. Thank you so much for making time in your busy day to join us today. Uh, my name is Monica. I'm the Education Manager at the Waitangi Treaty Grounds and one of the facilitators for Rāranga Matiko. And you've already heard from my lovely colleague from Te Papa. That Good is there. Tara Fagan. Fantastic. So we are going to take you on a little um, exploration today, um, 30 minutes looking at curriculum integration in this webinar. Um, if you would like to grab the slides, please feel free to scan the QR code or I'll use the bit.ly, the shortened address, bit.ly slash capital R, capital M, 3-2020. And we'll put the slides up along with the recording. They'll be posted by Wednesday next week. Fantastic. So the aim of the session is simply or really complicated, weaving the revised technology learning area through the curriculum. We hope we can make this a little bit easier for you because it is a big task, but many of you are doing a fabulous job already. So Tara will be controlling the slides and I'll do a little bit of the talking here. So I first want us to have a look at this graphic here. Um, that you can find on TKI on the link below there. It's talking about where local curriculum fits into the New Zealand curriculum. Now, those of us that have been around since before the New Zealand curriculum was implemented, um, they will have probably read in the introduction of the curriculum document, the phrase school curriculum. And um, so ever since this curriculum has come in, there has been a big emphasis on having local curriculum integrated. Where does this fit? with the rest that's going on in that document and in your busy days. So we have got our overarching vision for education and the New Zealand curriculum and the local school curriculum underpin this. And uh, below the vision, you can see the values and the principles that are holding up this vision. Again, our New Zealand curriculum and the local school curriculum are weaving into this. None of this could happen without our effective pedagogy that includes assessment. And the effective pedagogy is, um, is, it never changes, no matter what our medium is. Good pedagogy is good pedagogy, no matter what tools we're using. And uh, we know for our students to be effective in, um, uh, in what they're trying to endeavor and to be uh, competent and prepared for this world, they need key competencies across all the learning areas. And here at the bottom, you can see the classroom curriculum, what is actually going on in your classroom. So all these things weave together. And if you slightly put it in an angle, for me, it looks like the woven harakiki bands that often we make with our children in the classrooms because it all weaves together to um, be one very competent learner. So this is the theory behind it. But what if we look a little bit deeper? So we are uh, very much looking at the digital technology aspects of learning here in this webinar series and how to integrate them into our learning. And as you might remember, digital technology learning sits under the learning area technology. So here we've got the curriculum again with vision, principles, values, and key competencies. Technology, one of the learning areas below that. Technology is split up in the three strands, technological practice, technological knowledge and nature of technology. And we've looked at that in previous webinars. Um, so please feel free to check us back into some of those recordings. The learning um, is described, the learning outcomes are described in achievement objectives for the majority of the technology learning and in progress outcomes for the digital technology learning. And at the bottom, you can see our technological areas, designing and developing materials outcomes some people back in the olden days used to call it um, sewing <laughs> and, and various other um, areas like that could have been the metalwork, the woodwork. We have the processed outcomes. Uh, we've got our design and visual communication. And then on the sides, our computational thinking or algorithmic thinking, like some people like to call it, in designing and developing digital outcomes. So this is sitting in technology. And when I first saw it sit there, I became a bit concerned we leave this all to the technology teachers to cover. But now, as we've found, as since we've been working with this curriculum document, it's not um, that uh, far-fetched to weave this nicely across our curriculum. So when we're thinking about curriculum integration and what it actually is, 
It's a design that supports the needs for learners to be really actively involved in the learning process, which I'm sure we're all doing in our classroom. It values students' prior knowledge, what they bring, what they already know, and use that very much as a starting point. Curriculum integration is an active process that makes learning really relevant to students. So about what they know, how they can connect it to different subject areas rather than isolate them. And it's a pedagogy that's really culturally responsive, relevant and engaging for all learners. So Bolstead, Gilbert um, uh, and co did a report, it's a few years old now, looking at future, I'm just getting the name of the report so I can tell it and we'll put the link in with the notes we share on the webinar. Um, supporting future oriented learning and teaching report. And one of their key themes in the report is about a curriculum that uses knowledge to develop learning capacity. And they talked about the traditional idea of knowledge as content that's organized into curriculum according to disciplines, our subject areas. And from this point of view, the learner's job is to absorb and assimilate that knowledge into their minds and demonstrate how well they have um, they've gained that knowledge or how much they know about that knowledge through a variety of assessment types. And acquisition of knowledge at that point becomes valuable for its own sake, even if the learner's not doing very much with the knowledge other than demonstrating that they've learned it. So if you like, the underlying assumption is that this knowledge will be stored up in preparation for, for later use in, in that student's life at some stage. The second conception of knowledge is associated with the knowledge age or 21st century um, learning or discourse, if you like, where knowledge is about creating knowledge and using knowledge and bringing it to bear to solve problems and find solutions to challenges as they arise on a, if you like, just in time basis. So rather than being seen predominantly as a tool for prescribing things to be learned, the idea of curriculum as a guide for shaping and developing a learner's abilities, um, and identities has gained prominence over the last wee while. And we've received, seen this reflected in a variety of um, national and international reports, such as the UNESCO Learning to Be uh, focus at the moment. So um, the focus is about equipping people to be able to do things with knowledge and use knowledge in inventive ways in new contexts and combinations. So rather than providing access to a fixed stock of knowledge, the task is to equip learners to enter and navigate that knowledge and constantly shifting networks and flows of knowledge that are a feature of our lives now. Um, an individual stock knowledge, if you like, is an important as a foundation for their own cognitive um, growth and development. However, it's got to be useful as a foundation for their participation in social and economic life. And to do that, they must be able to connect and interrelate different disciplines and different aspects of knowledge. So they need to be able to do more than just reproduce knowledge. They must be able to actively interact with it, to understand it, critique it, manipulate it, transform it, and actually see it as a whole rather than these separate discipline subjects that sometimes we work with. There are times when we need to work with different technology. You know, that's that very subject base, for example, if you are um, learning about coding, sometimes you need a little bit of specific instruction on the basics of what you're doing before you can integrate that activity through to the curriculum. But when you can use different aspects of things like technology um, in your programs to be able to weave it through what you're doing, it becomes much more richer um, in, in the student's world. You're not becoming, you know, even computer programmers that might know everything there is to know about program and making, that they're doing it for a purpose, to design something. So computer programming and learning it is a means to be able to develop programs or make something run rather than just the basics. So even they're taking their content knowledge to be able to make something that works. So we're gonna have a little look now at, about how do you weave, and this can apply for any curriculum specific area. It could be literacy or numeracy or whatever, but because Rāranga Matihiko is focused on supporting the digital technologies Hangaro Matihiko initiative, we've pulled out digital technologies. So Monica, I know at the Waitangi Treaty Grounds, you and your team design a lot of programs with teachers, so you co-design with them, um, uh, you know, and weave the digital technology through. Can you talk a little bit about how you do that in your program? Yeah, it's really interesting. I was just sitting up for a late lunch now with two of our educators. We were talking about observations the kids made today 
this was not part of the topic, but they observed how the portocarpa trees up our way are starting to flower early. I don't know if any of our Northern colleagues, like I can see Amanda here on the call, if you've noticed that the portocarpa started to be in flower a few weeks early, the jacarandas are starting to come out in flower. And so when you know, when you've got these noticing, sometimes they are the beginning of an inquiry, aren't they? Because the kids actually want to know why is that? Why? Is something happening in nature it could be a particular learning that we want to apply and maybe um, think about the treaty grounds we might want to learn something that's very particular to what we talk about at the treaty grounds maybe we want to learn more about how um, carving is used as a method of telling stories rather than writing so whatever our topic is we need to put that at, uh, our learning is we need to put this at the center what what is this all about what's the learning in there to quote one of my good friends in Mary Hyde where is the learning in this so we are trying to find out why these polar are starting to flower early and this is an authentic context because they observe it right there around them so what the learning areas that would touch is what I would look at next. So we're definitely talking about something to do with the sciences, um, but we are also talking about how the environment is influencing possible um, climate change and what is that caused by? So it's caused by people, by the environment. There we're starting to touch already into our social sciences. We might be touching into um, other aspects like um, we might want to start reading about um, something that is in relation to that. So our um, languages start coming into that. And so it branches out. Now, if we've got a topic that we really want to inquire deeply into, our children need to apply quite a few of those key competencies we mentioned earlier, you know, thinking, um, using text symbols and language. Um, they might, you know, have to, working in groups might have to relate with each other, participate and contribute. And there our picture becomes richer and richer, but we haven't touched on digital technology learning yet. I always see digital technology as a tool to help me express something or to solve a problem. So express something through digital technology can take many forms and it's very basic form. We could type up a Google doc and have our text in there, but we can of course we can create much richer um, stories. You know, just imagine if you could um, create a storytelling of um, how seasons have changed over time and maybe it could be something very pictorial. It could be, um, some images the students have created and put into, uh, um, say, a digital book. Um, they could make a, a stop motion animation. Uh, they could create virtual worlds and actually show different aspects of how the real world has changed um, as expressed by those protocols starting early. Now, digital technology is always there uh, to help us solve a problem and um, to to come up with a solution that's not so easy to come up by ourselves. And that's some of the examples we've seen from some uh, of the schools that have come into various museums. I'm thinking, we talked about Nainai um, Nine Intermediate last uh, time, haven't we, Tara? About the children that came up with a solution to a problem they've observed in their environment. And they actually use digital technology to create possible solutions for it, which is of course the other way of how we can bind digital technology learning into our unit, which started with a simple um, um, observation of those protocarpa trees and flower really early. It's not always easy to translate it into the different areas. And we've talked about exemplars at some other times, how exemplars are really hard to take over. But we have um, tried to create some examples of how you could apply that. So Tara, do you want to flick the slide? And I think you wanted to talk to that a little bit. Thanks, Monica. I'll talk a little bit about how the series uh, came about um, and what we did. Now, I also have had a couple of requests uh, about sharing the slides. Apologies, I haven't got the right editing settings on. No, I need to do it, but I'll do it after the presentation. So the slides will be available within about five minutes of us, us finishing. Um, one of the responses we did during lockdown, um, when we were at home, we, had, we were asked by the ministry to develop a TV series for their home learning channel uh, around the digital technologies or technology learning area, um, because they had programs running for everything else. So uh, we very quickly, I want to say it was about 13 days we had from uh, finding out we were doing the work till our filming started to produce and conceptualize a television series that would work with students learning at home. So they're freely available. They're on the TVNZ Home Learning 
the, uh, the Ministry Home Learning website, TVNZ, and on our website. These were about taking a subject knowledge. We didn't just want to teach digital technologies. That's not what we do in our program. So we came up and worked around a theme of kaiti akitanga and each of those episodes, uh, there's one for juniors and one for seniors on each topic. So there's eight, eight in the series, eight juniors, eight seniors, um, looking at that topic and really starting to look at uh, the theme and each of those episodes takes a topic and gives some content around it and then works with some digital technologies. Monica is going to talk a, shortly a little bit about the teaching resources that were designed with that and adding a little bit more about how we shaped them. We were in lockdown, so if you if you ever watch these with your students, uh, you'll see that the very first episode we get um, our set changes because shops open. So we, you know, we start off very simply, but as we're able to access more things, uh, you will see that come through because uh, shops were open. So we managed to get things like T-shirts and different things more available um, because we went for, I think we started filming in level three and might have uh, finished filming in level two. So um, you can see that. That aside, I think the series shows how you can take a topic and use technology with that. Normally we'd put a little bit more content in there, but we were working to a very uh, a tight uh, filming time as well. So Monica, I'll leave you to talk a little bit about, um, about these episodes, if you like. Yeah, so there was an example of um, how we tried to come up with an authentic, well, hopefully authentic unit of learning that wove digital technology through it with, uh, amongst all those um, restrictions we had to do in lockdown, as um, Tara alluded to. So we fairly early on decided we would um, go with the theme of Katiakitanga because we had the whole message around COVID was be nice, be kind, look after each other. So we thought like, yes, this is what we want to go with. Also, we all work at museums and so we're all Katiaki of Tonga and stories in these museums. So we thought, you know, that worked for us as well. And then we decided what are the different aspects that um, people might find interesting to apply Kaitiaki Tanga to. So I've pulled out two examples in here in um, these slides. One of them was around Moana. So um, this particular unit is uh, looking at Kaitiaki Tanga in, rela um, in relation to or through the perspective of our oceans, our Moana. And um, we used an, a visit to uh, Tangata Ole Moana exhibition at Tipapa to add some ad um, additional content to that. Um, if you were in the classroom, you might have a whole lot of content already on there. And maybe if you're Wellington School, you might go into Te Papa and see that exhibition to add a little bit of icing on the cake here. Now, we then went and used computer assisted design to create our own walk, uh, model walker. And um, in fact, our educators, you can see Jesse here on the photograph on the right and Maite um, on the left, they are demonstrating how that would be done. They're about 15 minutes long each, so they're not too long to watch if you would like to. But how did that relate back to the way we designed our units? Tara, if you just want to click um, so that the pop-ups are going to come in and not just on the slide. Thank you. Oh, yeah, there we go. So we wanted to learn about Katiakitanga and we tried to make it authentic context by looking at the oceans. And that covered the learning areas, social sciences, place and environment, technology, nature of technology, and then technology in under designing and developing digital outcomes. And the way we um, put our digital learning into there was by using computer assisted design to create our own model walker. Now, um, we're not going to go there right now, but the hyperlinks underneath each of those video clips takes you to the teacher support materials we've developed. So in there, it has um, some of the readers that you might want to read with your students to support the topics, some of the other ideas. It has um, hyperlinks to some of the how-to guides we've created. We try to make it as comprehensive as possible that you as a teacher or the parents while they were homeschooling could use this as a unit um, and get the children involved in some um, authentic learning that involve digital technology through that unit. Now, if you just flick to the second slide for me, Tara, um, this was again, um, it's coincidence that I pulled out another water topic that was our, um, and it talks about how our our tanga and that we are kaitiaki of these natural resources. Um, in this case, we have a visit to the Waikato Museum, one of our partner museums here, and uh, we're using cloud stop motion to retell um, or animate a story about um, a particular river. 
again, video clips um, showcasing to you how that might work and then teacher support materials. So the way we designed it, Tara, if you click on the slide, is we looked at our, again, um, authentic context learning about natural resources and how to be kaitiaki for these. Um, the, um, sorry, that was the learning. The authentic context was our hour. We have got the following learning areas um, covered with this science, social science and technology. And then we've got digital technology learning, animating a story um, with cloud stop motion. Um, as you might notice, um, under the learning area technology, I put both um, areas, computational thinking and designing and developing digital outcomes. And you will find this the more you go into digital technology learning that these areas overlap and interweave. So cloud stop motion is definitely a tool um, that uh, creates digital learning objects, as many people will call them DLOs. And there can be a lot of creation within that, but you also have to follow computational thinking steps to get these in order. And that's where with this one unit, you get a whole lot of interlinking, not just of the different learning areas, but of these two areas within technology as well. So if we flick over to the next slide here, um, there is a whole heap of resources on the website now. Um, our educators have been making a whole lot of resources during lockdown and after. Um, and um, the lovely uh, Christina, one of our educators here at Waitangi, has been helping with getting them all up on the website. So if you think like, oh man, how on earth am I going to learn um, if this tool or yay tool is going to work for my children? Have a look there. There might be something on there that will just give you an idea. Oh, this is how I use it. This is how I get started. And always remember, you don't need to know everything. The children are pretty amazing at figuring out what they can do with the tool. In fact, tutoring is my best friend. Tutoring with a purpose that will get you and the students to be quite confident about these things. So these are some of the resources that might help you create a unit that weaves digital technology learning across various learning areas, but you might have some really good ideas of your own. So please feel free to use the chat to share some of those ideas. That would be great to see what you're sharing. Monica, while people are putting their ideas in the chat, I might just go back and click open one of those teaching resources that go with, um, I'm just going to pick the one on our. Um, you can let me know if it's coming up on the screen. Should be thinking about it at my end. We can, can see, see the twirling. Yes, it's the yes, end. <laughs> you can see it. So as you're thinking or starting to share in the chat box what um, how you're integrating and weaving through everything through the curriculum, this is one of the episode guides that goes supports the television series. Um, so it's designed to um, support whānau learning at home, but also teachers who might be using it in the classroom. So you can see that we've got a section there, resources to support whānau for learning at home with some activities, um, and then curriculum links for teachers. And we've just slotted them in where we saw them fitting in. Obviously, you'll be able to make more specific links judging on what you're learning in the classroom. So they're there for the NZC and the Moreau. Um, and then there's um, some extension activities or ideas about how you can weave it through. So we've we, you know, referred to journals where we can, um, the connected learning series, ready to read, so that they connect in and there's a package of work that's ready for you um, to be able to support you in the classroom should you need it. So each of our episodes of television has, has one of these with it um, and they've been designed to support that episode. So I'll just come back to our presentation, which is what you're seeing now. Yeah, yeah, we are, we are. And uh, we hope that some of this is useful. And, um, you know, if you've got any feedback about those um, guides, we would love to know. Um, we are not in the position to be able to try them out in our own classrooms in the same way you can. So only you can give us the feedback if they work. Now, I just want to do one little um note on there. Remember, as we talked about last time, some of our exemplars are exemplars and might not be authentic to your students. Please do go and make them authentic to you. Make them authentic to your local um, area. Make them authentic to what your children are interested in. And just use the exemplar as an exemplar of how you can structure it or how you might go from there. We would love to see your exemplars. And if you have got an exemplar you would like to share, um, if you would allow us, we would be happy to do that on your behalf as part of our, you know, sending our emails out. 
That's great. Now, Monica, I can't see the chat at the moment. Has there been anything come in? No, I'm it's sure a bit quiet here today. Um, I put a message in earlier. I've changed the sharing settings. Apologies. Oh. Thank you. So hopefully that is resolved now. Any yeah. anyone who would like to share anything about some of their thoughts, please feel free. That's that's the time now. Yeah. Just while people are taking the time to either think whether they're sharing or typing as they're sharing. I will just bring up the uh, details for our next session and then I'll come back to, to the uh, slide about our aims. So our final webinar in the series and for this year is next Thursday, same time, same place, same Zoom link. Um, and we will put the recordings and the slides up on our website. We'll probably get them up by about Wednesday, the week after the, at screen. So that's our final webinar for for next year, we will be running some more, um, sorry, final webinar for this year. We will be running some more in 2021 uh, and we will probably email out to everyone who's registered. But for this year, this is our final one. And it talks about uh, weaving it all together in our final, final webinar. So great place to come, bring your questions. We're gonna have a bit of a panel discussion at the same time. Um, uh, it will as much as you can manage them with half an hour. So that's sitting there. Um, so just before we finish up, anything in the chat? No, I think we're all quiet today. Yeah, not surprising. We're coming towards the end of the term. It's been a very long year for, for many of us. And I'm sure if you're like me, you're on the countdown till uh, a holiday break. <laughs> yes, so, so thank you so much again for coming and joining us today. Thanks for your thumbs up, Amanda. Appreciate it. Um, go well, we will see you next week, but we will finish off with Karakia. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us. We all see you next week. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Kakite.